Uh, okay, last time we finished up chapter seven. So chapter seven is authentication. Okay, what is authentication? How do we describe that? Are you who you, say you, who are. you say you are or something like that, right? So you come up to your computer, you claim claim to be you claim to be some I didn't order by the free here. You claim to be somebody and the computer says prove it, right? And then you have to provide a password or a biometric or something along those lines. Okay, so we spent a lot of time talking about passwords. Uh, and as you'll see when you do the homework, there's several questions related to passwords. Uh, then biometrics, we spent quite a bit of time on biometrics. There's a few questions on biometrics there uh, as well. Um, and then at the end of chapter seven, there were some sort of odds and ends, you know, the two-factor authentication, the single sign-on, and those kind, kinds of things. Okay, now on to chapter eight, uh, authorization. So what's the difference, authorization and authentication? What I rely on. Yeah, so it's assuming you're an authenticated user, okay, or somehow you got access. Now what are you allowed to do? How do we place restrictions on your actions? And how are those kind of things enforced? Uh, now, uh, chapter eight, um, this is kind of the first place we have to sort of make a decision here, uh, meaning, I have to make a decision, not you have to make a decision. But we have to decide uh, what we're going to do for the rest of the course. Uh, there's sort of two paths, and this is where it branches for the first, or at least two paths. This is the first place we have to decide. So the alternatives are uh, we could do chapter eight like really quickly. This is what I used to do every time I taught the class. I mean, we'd spend like literally a day on chapter eight. We'd skip most everything in chapter eight, just the very basic, most important things in chapter eight. Then we would have, and that would save us enough time that we'd have more time at the end to spend more time talking about software issues. Okay, but the last couple times I taught the course, I kind of turned that around and we end up spending a lot of time in chapter eight. Um, and there's a lot of interesting stuff here. I always wanted to cover this stuff. The problem is if we do that, you know, the trade-off is when we get to the end, the stuff on software, we have to really cut it short there, you know, really just get the high points. So I think we're probably going to do the latter again. Um, um, and so what that means is when we do this chapter here, there's kind of a point we get to in the middle where we need to talk about uh, networking a little bit more. So we'll, jump, we'll sort of put chapter eight on hold at that point, go to the appendix and cover the section on networking that's in the appendix and then come back and finish up chapter eight. So it makes chapter eight you know, in effect, if you include that, really long. Okay, it makes a lot of stuff there, but um, it allows us to do some other things that we couldn't do, you know, if we, uh, you know, so it's really more networking or more software, you know, you have to make the choice. So a little more networking, a little less software is the way it's probably going to go here. Unless I change my mind in midstream here, and, you know. Okay, okay, so anyway, authorization. <coughs> So, okay, so this is the just the idea that, you know, you're trying to keep somebody out. You know, authentication, in a sense, is easier problem than authorization. Once somebody gets access, you know, how do you restrict their actions? You know, we'll see some techniques here. Um, and I talk about the basics, at least. Um, this, uh, it, we'll talk about a topic called covert channels, and this is sort of the human uh, version of covert <coughs> channels. Somebody who's got the inside information on this. Okay, so just a reminder, uh, authentication, you know, are you who you say you are, uh, whereas authentic, uh, authorization <coughs> is, are you allowed to do that? So you're an authenticated user, we're trying to restrict your uh, actions somehow. Uh, so the point is, this is a form of access control, okay? So, you know, restrictions on what users can, okay, who's allowed to access what? Now, this is maybe another weird thing about chapter eight. <laughs> There's a topic I really want to cover here called uh, system certification, <coughs> which deals with uh, how to, this is something uh, the US government has kind of promoted for a long time, and other governments are kind of in on this too now, more recently. Uh, they try to uh, set up ways that you can get a product certified, okay, meaning that it passes some level of uh, certification, so you can have sort of, so supposedly you can have some level of confidence that it does certain things correctly. Okay, that's 
definitely related to authorization here, but it doesn't kind of neatly fit in uh, any place in this chapter that I could find. <coughs> so the choice was sort of either to put it at the start, put it at the middle, put it at the end. I just stuck it in here at the start. Okay, so we have sort of a little detour at the start before we get back to the real sort of hardcore authenticate or authorization stuff. But um, I think it's worth at least uh, knowing something about this. Okay. So with all those warnings. Um, so system certification. So the idea here, again, is the government wants to set some standards, and if your product can pass those standards, then people can have some level of confidence that it you know, does certain things correctly, okay? it's a secure product, at least in some sense. Now, for no other reason, this would be uh, of historical interest. Um, you can really look at this system certification thing as kind of the history of authorization, in a sense, or access control, in a sense. Uh, but it's also relevant because, uh, it, you know, just when I worked for my startup company, you know, back before I started here, uh, we had a product that we, well, we almost had a product, and we hoped if we ever really had a product that we would sell it to the government. And so we had to go through, if we would have had that product, we would have had to go through this particular certification, a particular certification process. Um, so it's still true today that you, know, you, have to, you have to deal with this uh, in some cases. Now, it's kind of tempting for me, being, I guess, a little bit cynical here, to just argue that this whole certification thing is a bunch of bunk you know, and doesn't work, because the government only buys certified products. <laughs> right? How secure is the government? Well, they don't look very secure to me. I see secrets leaking out all the time all over the place. So, you know, it's kind of... You know, how effective is it is certainly open to 